Well, hello, thank you for coming. Um, I speak English very quickly, but there is a solution for this over here. These wonderful ladies in this box here can, can translate my every word to French instantaneously, which is fantastic, uh, or fantastique, depending on how you say it. So thank you for coming. I'm going to talk about LibreOffice Online. It has been perhaps rightly said that there is no cloud. It's just someone else's computer. But if it's your computer, it's not someone else's. So wouldn't it be nice if we could get LibreOffice in a 100% free software implementation, of course, we, we have that, um, on, on your computer, uh, on the internet, where you can access it anywhere, uh, inside your company, on your premise, uh, so that you can trust it uh, with a hoster, hoster you trust, perhaps, even. Um, so you know who you're sharing your CPU with. Um, one of the, the less thought about things about the, uh, the public cloud is you just have no idea who is sharing the same computer with you. Maybe it's in Ireland. Well, that's good, because it's in the EU, right? That's excellent. Um, but there could be a Korean, North Korean spy using the same CPU, and you have no idea. Um, which would be fine, except for all these vulnerabilities we find in CPUs, like your DRAM is dodgy. You know, uh, Rowhammer can corrupt your, your memory state. Um, you know, the, the, the hypervisor has bugs left and right. The kernel can be subverted and so on. So it's really nice to know where your data is, uh, who else is using the same hardware, and be able to control that. Um, of course, we've been working very hard on, uh, well, Calabra Online and LibreOffice Online are essentially the same product. It's 100% open source. There's no open core. It's, it's all a public tag in Git, our product. And we've just been doing a lot of the work on it. So there's, a, there's both uh, names, I guess, in my slides there. Um, but easy to integrate with other systems. Something that does one thing and does it well, um, efficient, uh, obviously scalable, and, uh, and, and useful. So I'll show you some pictures of this in a minute. If you want a demo, we have a booth, a uh, LibreOffice booth down here that you can go and see uh, a beautiful demo of it um, later. Or come and grab me. One of the nice things about uh, Calabra Online is that it, it does a high fidelity rendering. So what you see is what you get. Uh, people threw away WYSIWYG editing with the wiki and, and remembered you know, sort of strange markup languages from the 80s. And, um, but they did this because they wanted collaboration. Collaboration is such an awesome thing, you know, to be able to work with other people on documents. But we can get the best of both worlds, collaboration and high fidelity, what you see is what you get, paginated uh, layout. Um, which, is, which is pretty awesome, and an amazing document support. Obviously, if it renders in LibreOffice on your PC, it will render the same uh, in, in uh, Calabra Online. So, uh, and great document support, obviously. Always improving, a, a huge team of people in LibreOffice, uh, you know, improving these things constantly. At the moment, we have only basic document editing, so if you want to do, for example, an extremely powerful pivot table creation, that's not going to work. Um, if you want to create an amazing new template with a credible set of styles and, and something else, that probably won't work. Of course, the template will work. Uh, having created it in the PC version, you can then use it online and it'll lay out and render nicely. Um, but it's basic editing at the moment, uh, simple styles, simple, um, simple editing. And collaborative editing, of course, of course too. Um, we released a, a 2.0 with collaborative editing um, uh, Recently, I think only a few weeks ago. So this is this is great. Give it a try. Uh, I'll see what you can uh, do with it. Um, and we'll be working on better uh, commenting and collaboration next. We find huge numbers of users just use uh, commenting on documents. You know, maybe they don't even edit it, but they just want to say, "Oh, this bit's bad. This bit's good." You know, just that uh, great commenting uh, workflow on improving documents for everyone. And uh, code is the Calabra Online Development Edition, or you know, the LibreOffice Online. I um, it's suitable for home use. Um, Meaning that we don't think volunteers should be made to feel responsible for your giant enterprise. You know, if you have a mission critical system, you need to get some support from it from someone else and not give stress and aggravation to volunteers who are trying to have fun whilst advancing the state of the art. Um, some quick bits here. The, your enterprise file sync and share solution, whatever happens to be, your storage solution does all the hard stuff. You know, the authentication, the Active Directory, da da da, um, replication, backups, database, uh, high availability. We do just this collaborative editing. We are a 100% office focused piece doing documents and nothing else. And the great thing about that is that there's a small feature set here. We can win. We can be better than proprietary solutions. My anticipation is in the next, next six months, and certainly to a year, we will be ahead of name another uh, online office suite in, ev in every regard. Feature function, you know, stability, deployment on-premise, of course, and, and just you know, 
kicking their backsides. So, so that's pretty exciting. The other thing is that document formats have been a big problem. Um, you can go to the Open Document Format Plug Fest here today, and the Open Document Format ODF is, is our preferred solution. But in the cloud, of course, you can send a web link to someone else who is foolish and doesn't have um, you know, a LibreOffice installed. And they can still uh, read your document, print it out, get a PDF. Um, so here we go. There it is. Go and grab it. Get an extension for your enterprise file sync and share. Here's where it, what it looks like. I have some, some more pictures. So you know, beautiful collaborative editing, uh, multiple selections, cursors, uh, mobile phone empowered, you know, uh, big selection handles, commenting, uh, word processing, of course, doc, docx, uh, xlsx. Um, you can see here, you know, various people uh, editing inside the document. Uh, impress, so for presentations again, you know, being able to just check your slides and, and make sure that they, they fit the management's concerns and also the community concerns and so on, um, and make, make sure everything's beautiful. So how do we do it? Well, um, here's to some degree what it looks like. We have a whole load of um, a potentially large number of servers, blades, uh, and each of these is running a web services daemon, maybe they're virtual machines, Docker images. It, and, and this web services daemon loads LibreOffice, which is thought of as a big piece of software. And it initializes it, and it, it pre-initializes pre it in lots of ways. And it creates this thing called the forkit, which can then spawn lots of little LibreOffices, one in each container. So every document is stuck inside a container for security reasons. Uh, so they're all isolated from each other. And this is then relatively efficient memory-wise. So if you're used to using LibreOffice and thinking, oh, it's very heavy, it takes a long time to start, <clears throat> you know, it's 150 megabytes of code, all of that code is shared across all of these things. If you've ever started a Java application, you'll have the same experience. It takes a very long time to start. But then, you know, people use enterprise Java left and right. You know, once it's up and bootstrapped, it can you know, spawn many, many threads uh, rapidly. And the clients then talk to this, uh, this daemon. Security is a thing that's very important to us too. Um, so there are a whole load of things we do around security. Um, we use Kverity. We have a better Kverity score, which is a static checker uh, looking for security issues. Better score than the Linux kernel, a better score than Apache, a better score than lots of other things. We, we take static checking really extremely uh, carefully. Um, then we do load crash testing. We have um, 90,000 or so documents that we load, uh, save, and we test uh, extensively in, in all of our, our formats to make sure there are no nasty uh, crashes uh, that were around. We have a ch root per document. So there's a little container of that document. And inside it, there is nothing. It's an extraordinarily sparse file system, no shell, no dodgy binaries. Even if you break out into this uh, ch root, you'll find nothing to help you. Uh, we plan to put seccomp BPF in there so that you can lock down the syscalls. And then, of course, you know, we put the document data inside that ch root. We can put this inside a Docker image itself or a, a virtual machine. So trying to make it uh, nice and sweet. Um, we use a thing called WAPI, uh, which is a, a nice open protocol, very simple uh, to push data into and out of these uh, little ch root jails. Um, so it's really just a get and a post. Um, and we can push a whole load of information, username, file size, this kind of thing. Um, with a, uh, a, a file information a thing. So we're eager that you can get this soon. We want this uh, on your, you know, your machine uh, tomorrow or even today if you can uh, you know, take a break from the conference. So we have partnered with a huge number of people. Uh, own Cloud, NextCloud, Pydeo is a Paris-based French excellent uh, sharing thing. C-File, uh, Colab, VNC, all, all of these people and, and more. Uh, are distributing uh, Calabra online. Uh, many of these people ship with integrations today. Um, others are working on them now. So you can just drop this piece in, uh, you know, fire up a Docker image, configure the integration, and, and just get going. So that's cool. You know. So th there is an alternative to Office 365. You don't have to be sucked down into this route. You, know? you don't have to be, have your data dragged away from you into someone else's cloud on the, someone else's computer. There are people able to help you, able to support you, and able to deploy this thing uh, right now. Uh, so here's a picture of how that can work. Um, this is our, our setup with a whole load of, of users, obviously, and then um, three machines for example, uh, balancing this. Often we see people uh, you know, have problems with the, the cryptography and certificate setup, and so they, it's nice to do the uh, SSL offload on the, on the balancer or high, high availability stack there. Th there's only one key thing when you're distributing across multiple machines. All the traffic related to a single document, which you can see from your URL, has to go to the same machine. So the way that we can bring this to market very quickly 
the ma way that we can, we can do it very sweetly is by having all of the users using that document, collaborating on it, go into the same process in the same address space. Um, and this just makes everything extremely, extremely simple. Um, so how much hardware do you need? Um, so you, here's, here, here are the numbers, quickly uh, a 10, 100, and another 100. Um, but my laptop uh, sitting over here you know, has got uh, a gigabit network card in it for some reason, um, a 16 gig of RAM, and uh, it has eight threads. So the CPU, I guess, is the, uh, is the bottleneck here. So we get about 80 users on my, on my laptop. I think we can probably find some more powerful hardware than that relatively cheaply. We do a whole load of nice things too. So, uh, for example, uh, depending on your file sync and share solution, you have versioning. So, you know, you can look back at old versions, you can preview them, restore old versions. Um, when it comes to the really hard stuff, so, so there are several uh, approaches to doing the difficult bits. Um, we have uh, avoided uh, doing too much operational uh, transform work because, in our experience, we don't actually need it. We're using this thing very actively ourselves, and. It's, it's rare that multiple people will do operations that they need to undo concurrently and collide. It just doesn't seem to happen a lot. But in this case, you can see the complete set of operations that have been done and you wind back the undo stack between uh, multiple users. There's some funky debugging stuff. So if you like to see flickering JavaScript and multicolored displays and millisecond latencies and so on, you can, you can see that. So that's pretty much LibreOffice Online. That's the, the piece we've been doing there. I'd like to talk quickly about LibreOffice 5.3, which is uh, coming out soon and we'll ship for the first time uh, LibreOffice Online, so it'll be available uh, in, the, in the community version um, as, a, as a release there. And I want to talk about some of the other things uh, on the PC version of LibreOffice. So th this is just a flavor of what's in 5.3, but what I'm excited about. Uh, so the database piece, for example, has been using this horrible Java database, H SQL DB, uh, for, for years. And we finally got Firebird 3.0 into there. And my hope is that we can get a very fast, very slick, beautiful uh, database engine uh, into LibreOffice and really revitalize and improve that component. Uh, lots of random improvements here. The user experience is undergoing some kind of revolution and improvement. Obviously, your existing user experience will continue to work, but there will be more options uh, with a notebook bar coming soon, um, table styles coming in, much improved PDF document signing. There's really just so many things happening in LibreOffice. It's very hard to give a big picture. Um, uh, you know, th there's no one thing that's, that's really happened. There's just a lot of improvements uh, across a huge uh, feature surface in, in 5.3. So give it a try. And uh, my last my last slide just says thank you for your support. I, you know, LibreOffice would be nothing without all of the people who have helped us, who've taken an interest, who've supported it. Uh, we have something like 60,000 donors uh, every year giving us money to support our mission. And we're fantastically grateful to you. So thank you. If that's you, um, please do get involved and contribute. Uh, if you want to try out LibreOffice online or Collabora online, you can grab it from our, uh, you'd grab the demo now while you're sitting there uh, here, or you can download the code from Free Desktop uh, in, in the URL there, um, and you can play with the various uh, integration projects. The OwnCloud one there works for NextCloud as well. Um, yeah, there's API reference, and yeah, just thanks to everyone who's uh, supported LibreOffice over the years. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. That's very good news, what, is, what you announced uh, today for us. I'm a huge fan. I'm using LibreOffice for oh, 12 oh, years now. My man, look at that, 12 years, before it even started. That's fantastic. You know, I, I, you know this, is, this is the cutting edge. That was edge, open you know? office before. <laughs> it was but open you know, office. I know, I'm teasing. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Thank you very much for coming, Michael. Very That's good news. And I Bless really you, encourage everybody to, see, to go to your booth and yeah. to chat with the people of the community of LibreOffice. Check it out. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Goodbye.